I love the medium of anime. There are lots of different types of shows, from epic adventures to the down-to-earth relaxing shows that just make me smile. I just love how anime can appeal to so many different parts of me. Gigek made a recent video talking about the greatest thing that anime had done is to connect with him and allow him to connect with others. So today I want to share with you 10 different anime that have connected with me. This isn't my top anime of all time list, though there's certainly some overlap here. And also this list is not ranked, though there's a reason I'm saving a certain one for last. I'm also trying to find a show that best represents each thing that I love about anime to give some variety for this list. And let me know in the comments what are some anime that really connected with you and if you felt similarly to me with any of these shows. So with that intro out of the way, let's get on to the list itself. One of the stereotypes that anime quickly shatters is the belief that cartoons are just for kids. There are countless numbers of anime that have tons of violence or gore or sexual content, but I think what really speaks to the maturity of at least some of the medium is how astutely and terrifyingly they can portray humanity. For all the talk about the humans being the good guys, it's not hard for us to succumb to some pretty terrible actions, and this is one of the reasons I love Shinsekai Yori. It explores how the world would evolve if humanity began to develop psychic powers and shows what appears to be a perfect and peaceful world, but we see that no perfect world can be made without cost, and for the good of the world, terrible choices must be made. But at the end of the show, you'll wonder if the villains were even that bad, and you can easily see the heroes as the true monsters. Fiction can speak to reality in a powerful way, and the realism of this fantasy story is what makes it so horrifying. There are some anime that are fun in the moment, but then there are others that leave you with lingering questions about life itself. Sometimes it can be easy to live in illusion, to pluck out the truth of the world from your eyes, but there are some anime that force you to really ponder life, and Zega Paint is one of my favorite anime for this reason. It tells the story of a carefree world that doesn't know the pain of war that has been raging. It gets into the questions about what is real and perception and the comforting power of illusions. There haven't been many anime that get into the characters in this way as they ask all these questions about life and how they want to live. Some characters here embrace the challenges of reality and embrace the fragile sacredness of life while others are content living a more comfortable lie. This hidden gem of a mech anime combines the fantastical with mundane in a way that makes it one of the reasons I really do love anime. But I'm not someone who always dwells in the deep end of the anime spectrum. Sure, those philosophical ideas are cool to think about, but there are sometimes I just want to have fun watching the show. You know the ones I'm talking about here. These shows are the ones that relish in the absurdity that the medium of animation offers due to something completely ridiculously awesome. Kill a Kill and Away Twin Tales are two examples of this, combining a fun story with something a little bit deeper, but this category I want to recognize the most fun show I've seen that offers nothing of substance, and that is Keijo. It is a show that knows how action shown in anime work with all the hype surrounding matches or battles, so it takes all this, throws it into a sports show in the most absurd way possible. Keijo is not a show to watch when you want a deep story or interesting characters or even something that isn't cliche, but it focuses solely on fun with the stupid concept and never presence fan service enhancing one another and having some of those fun battles anime has to offer. This show is a celebration of the ridiculous of anime, and so I celebrate it with its spot here. I also love the sheer creativity that anime offers and how it tells stories that no other medium could. There are far too many for me to list here, but one specifically is Flip Flappers. It is bright and vibrant and weird and wonderful while telling the story of these magical girls as they travel through different dimensions of pure illusion. Each episode adds more to the story in the world in a way that embraces the insane while also showing how simple things can change a life. The art style here alone is worthy of note, but the message is about growing up, going on adventures, and finding a place in the world really made something special. Anime is weird, and that's why I love it. The themes of growing up are present in a lot of anime, which isn't surprising considering the heavy focus on teenage protagonists. Some shows embrace the concept of growing up and finding a place in the world through bizarre adventures, but others are much more down to earth. Going through high school and college, it can be difficult to find your place in the world, especially when the world seems scary and the familiar seems safe. Gekko Garashi takes a very odd spin on this concept, which I found fascinating, and then Tatami Galaxy examines these questions about the choice in life through college, but I think the show that best fits this idea of growing up is Kaon, specifically season 2, and this is possibly because of the show I've been watching lately. The reason it stands out so much is because these characters are having fun, but there's a constant shadow of the future that looms over there. Yui is reluctant to change to leave her childish ways behind her, even though that is something that growing up is about. I also really love the times where Azusa sees that the friends she's made over the past couple years are going to be moving on without her. It's a challenging and difficult time, but Kaon proves that you should still have fun along the way because fun things are fun. And yes, I'm actually praising Kaon. I can't believe it either. But as we grow up, we have to decide who we want to be in our bombarded with expectations from our family, friends, and society as a whole. And one of the things I love about anime is how it is a beacon for something different and to shun normalcy, and no other anime captures this better than Space Patrol Luluko. Though pretty much everything's trigger is done could qualify here as well. From the very beginning of the anime, Luluko wants a normal life, but after her dad is frozen us, she is forced to become someone far from ordinary and fight evil for justice. She goes on a mock speed adventure filled with witches and killing, all the while gushing over the love of her life, despite the fact that her love is worthless. 
she learns that instead of seeking the normal life by others' definition, she must instead decide what is normal for herself. And this is a show that celebrates the absurd, the bizarre, and how a worthless confession of love is worth fighting for, and how the things deemed to be wastes of time can be the most valuable. If I had to pick a single show that represents what I love about anime, Lilacu would probably be it with all of its absurdity. But on the other hand, something else I love about anime is how I was able to take these absurd concepts and convey a very down-to-earth and powerful message through them. This brings us to the next anime on my list, Assassination Classroom. The concept of a classroom must assassinate their teacher to say the world is far from a normal one, but the show does a great job of connecting with those who feel like they've been discarded in life. The power that a teacher can have is shown handedly here, and the teacher need not move at Mach 20 to have an impact in a student's life. There are many messages that can be taken from these students learning to kill as well. I love seeing the legacy that Koro Sensei left with these children, and he's taught me a few lessons as well. I'm also reminded of my older sister who is a math teacher, and hearing stories from her show that a good teacher really can have an impact on a student's life. Sometimes all a student needs is for someone to really believe in them, and this is shown through Koro Sensei believing in those who the world deemed as worthless. And another thing that I love about anime is how inspirational it can be. There are countless anime about following our dreams from the most realistic sports anime like AQ to the ones with superpowers like Naruto, but I think the one that has had the biggest impact on me is Boku no Hero. While I love pretty much everything about the show, the one thing that sticks with me above all else is Deku's journey to become the greatest hero despite how weak he was at the start. He shows that with courage and hard work, anything can happen. Throughout the story, he faces constant mocking for those who don't believe in him, and there's even a point where he doesn't believe in himself. But all his life, he has reached for his dream of becoming a hero. Even when he doesn't see how that could be possible, he runs for it anyway. That's one of the great messages in this show, to make your dream so much a part of you that even when you lose your way, you're still running after it. Of course, even after Deku got his powers, he's faced with challenges, and leads to learn how to control his strength to take his place as a hero. His journey is a hard one, even with the gifts he's been given, but it's one that inspires those who see him, both in the anime and in the real world, to fight to make a change in the world. Because this show tells you that you too can become a hero and reach your dreams. But sometimes the dreams everyone to reach just aren't obtainable, or we find what we've always wanted wasn't what we thought it would be. How characters deal with these shattered dreams can create some incredible stories. Girlish Number does this with a cynical look at the voice acting industry, Gintama does it with the whole fighting against invaders thing, and while these are fascinating shows, the one I feel best embodies this is the Fate series, specifically Unlimited Blade Works and how it deals with becoming a hero of justice. Shiro wants to be a hero of justice who can save anyone, but the show forced him to confront the impossibility and even hypocrisy of such an ideal, and he sees that attempting to pursue such a path is one that will lead to untold amounts of suffering for himself. This is really shown during the battle between Shiro and Archer, which is a battle of ideals more than physical strength, and Shiro sees that his ideals are merely borrowed from his father. But despite all this, Shiro embraces his ideal, acknowledging the possibility of it, but still choosing to pursue it. While he may not be able to save everyone as his dream is to, he can still prevent suffering in the world, and that's why I love this ideal so much. Maybe one person can't save the world, and maybe one person can't be a symbol of peace, but every person can make a difference in the world, even just through some small ways, and that's what makes them heroes of justice. So far throughout this video, I've talked to you about many of the things that keep me coming back to anime, but for my final entry, I want to talk about what anime did to first grab me and get me interested in the medium, even though I didn't know what anime was. And this is the grand adventures where the heroes must fight to save the world. There are countless shows that fit with this description, things like Naruto, Fullmetal Alchemist, Dragon Ball, just being the ones that come to mind right away. But the first anime that sparked my love with the medium was Digimon. Before Digimon, I hadn't seen any stories quite like this. Here you have these kids going on a grand adventure filled with danger, and not just the type of danger that went away at the end of the episode. I first started watching it during the Myosmon arc, and he was just a great villain for me to start my anime journey with. Beyond looking cool and scary, you know that any time he showed up, he was more than likely going to defeat the heroes, even going so far as to kill some of the good Digimon, and as a kid, this was something completely new. Plus the whole concept of Digimon was cool, all these different monsters that had different abilities and they teamed up with these kids to save the world, I mean what's not to love about that? I even remember coming up with my own stories about Digimon in my head, and while these were never written down, this was the start of my interest in writing my own stories. And talking about my love of Digimon, heroes made me really look forward to watching Try Once Over, even though I get the feeling it won't uh, hold up quite as well as my memories of the first Digimon one. But still, it'll be fun to watch it just for nostalgia's sake. So that's been 10 examples of why I love anime, and leave your own down below, I'm curious to see them. I'm also wondering if there are any similarities between reasons I love things and reasons you might, so yeah, leave that down below too. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.